the year comes to an end, we come close to realizing our motorcycle GPS solution. What's up everybody, welcome back and to new viewers, as always, welcome to the channel. It's been a while since the last upload as me and the team have been very busy in the background with the development of our motorcycle GPS solution. But we have some exciting updates to share in regards to the project. When we started building the app, we made a rough sketch of how the app was supposed to look like, but it was mostly unplanned as we were focusing more on the functionality we want to realize within the prototype itself. This however resulted in the app looking a bit trash honestly and not providing the best user experience. Well, learning from our shortcomings in terms of UI planning, we decided to fix this by hiring our talented friend over at Pope Studio, who conjured up this sleek design made with the user in mind and allowing for a better one-handed experience. We're currently in the process of integrating these designs whilst at the same time working on the basic features we want in our early prototype. You guys can expect the newly revamped UI to be fully integrated in the next month, which is technically the coming year. Speaking of planning and preparing, we have some exciting news for our developers and end users alike. Recently we've noticed during development that the user experience can be a slight bit sluggish or better said not as snappy as you would like. I'd argue it's not enough to warrant it being a problem now but this could lead to a lot of technical debt in the near future. Not wanting to repeat our earlier mistake we made in terms of UI, we decided to plan ahead and review our options. We settled on two options. We could either optimize the flutter code as much as possible which would be quicker to implement but means we'll lack the ability for lower level optimization in the future which could impact the performance in the far future. Future. Or alternatively, we could work with a form function interface, which is just a fancy way of saying write part of the code in one language and the other part in another. Go with this idea, we would keep the UI and part of the business logic in Flutter and extract the heavy hitting processing parts to a lower level language. This in turn would provide us with more control, allowing us to optimize code even more where most of the heavy lifting is done. Meaning we'll be able to provide a snappy, effective and pleasant experience far further into the future. With this being our options, we settled for the latter and extracted part of the code base to Rust. We chose Rust for its cross-platform compatibility, memory safety and performance. And move several several performance critical components to Rust, such as protobuf serialization, Bluetooth low energy frame chunking, and CRC validation. You can find the specifics on how all of this works in our documentation over at the Git repository. And you can expect these changes to be implemented before the end of the month. Alongside the software we're developing, we also have some updates in terms of the hardware prototype we're creating. Last month, I showed the design for the hardware prototype we were planning on releasing. For this early prototype, we had decided to use the Bangle.js 2 as our hardware platform as it contained all the sensors we needed and came with its own JavaScript interpreter, allowing us to quickly develop the firmware for the hardware prototype in a short amount of time. However, having now worked with the Bangle over the last two months, we've had several issues with the units we've ordered, things such as malfunctioning Bluetooth chips, issues with Bluetooth stability, and the constant to and fro with shipping, in combination with the time we had remaining to create a prototype, meant we needed to reconsider our options. And I want to state first that we don't intend to bash the products as Prino, the company making them makes. As our customer experience with them has been absolutely great, and there are plenty of records of their products working flawlessly for other people. We just seem to pull the short end of the silicon lottery, but with this being the case and the time we had left, we decided to move over to another hardware platform that will allow us to realize the prototype in the time we have remaining. Namely, we decided to develop our prototype on the Google Pixel Watch as it has all the sensors we need. Its Wear OS platform allows us to quickly set up a prototype and its screen resolution and size are more in line of what we had in mind for our final product. Because in essence, what we want to achieve with our early prototype is to give the user a basic sense of the features of both the application and the hardware unit. Alongside how the user is going to interact with it, to be able to receive you guys' input and create the absolutely best possible device for you guys. Speaking of interacting with a prototype, we have some exciting news for our users here in the Netherlands and the surrounding area. As we will be attending the motorcycle convention in Utrecht coming February, where we will be showing off the prototype and giving everybody a chance to interact with it in person. So if any of you guys will be attending, feel free to pass by our booth and give the navigation companion a try. Lastly, we made some renders, which I'll put up on the screen around here, to give people a better idea of how the final product is going to look like, which we've also posted over other socials, which you guys should follow if you haven't yet. And with that, we conclude the update for December. I want to wish you all a happy holidays and a happy new year in advance. We're looking forward to the developments the new year will bring and we'll make sure to keep you guys updated. And with that, thank you guys for watching.